The Gospel passage we've heard today is often referred to as the cleansing of the temple and there are several works of art which have taken this title. Although John puts this incident at a different point in his Gospel, it's clear that both he and the other Gospel writers think of the story as pivotal in setting up the conflict between Jesus and the temple authorities. So I think we can take from that that it's an important story both in illustrating how Jesus understood his work and the reaction to it. I grew up in a Christian tradition where the buildings were relatively small. Um, Your average Welsh chapel holds maybe a few hundred people. And so I've often struggled with imagining this incident because I think of Jesus going into a pulpit or... um, the main body of a smallish church or chapel and confronting the people in it. And in an enclosed space like that, the scene would certainly be very dramatic. You could imagine it having quite an impact. But the temple at Jerusalem wasn't like a local religious building. It wasn't even like a cathedral. It's estimated that at its largest extent, the temple during this period would have been able to accommodate about 300 to 400,000 people at the biggest festivals. Now, to put that into perspective, the two largest sports grounds in Manchester, the Etihad campus and Old Trafford, if you put them together, you get a capacity of about 130,000 people. So the temple complex, including the plazas around it, was clearly very, very big. If you've ever seen film or pictures of events at Mecca during the most important times of the Muslim calendar, you'll probably get a sense of the scale of a religious festival at the time. There are thousands of people milling about. And Jesus doesn't literally storm into the centre. He doesn't go right up to where the priests are doing their work or stand in the most prominent place where everybody can see him. The live animals would have been somewhere at the edge, possibly not even technically in the main courts of the temple, but in areas where they would be stored before being killed in a sacrifice. You wouldn't necessarily want live animals wandering through the temple. And equally, the money changers would have been at the edge of the complex so that people could change their everyday currency into the type of currency that they could then put into the temple treasury. Given the size of the crowd and the location where it happened, it's very possible that not many people would have actually noticed what had happened on the day that it did. But its symbolic meaning of Jesus driving animals out of the temple and overturning tables clearly had an effect. John 
uses it as a way of introducing an idea about th- the difference between God dwelling in the temple and God dwelling in Jesus. Jesus refers to the temple of his body in contrast to this grand building. And it also causes his disciples to reflect and remember. It's not clear from the way John tells it whether they remembered at the time the verse from the Psalms which says, zeal for your house has overcome me, or whether this is a later reflection with his disciples thinking about the story at some point after the resurrection, maybe several decades later, and finding those words particularly appropriate. But this phrase, which is taken from Psalm 69, clearly resonated for them when thinking about Jesus' actions. When I started thinking about today's passage, the hearing was taking place in Washington, D.C., into the incidents on the 6th of January, when armed people stormed the Capitol building. Is that zeal? And another story in the media recently has been that of Shamema Begum. She was 15 when, after being encouraged by contact over the internet, she left Britain to go to Iraq to join the Islamic State, where she became the wife of a fighter and has given birth to three children, all of whom who have sadly died. And she's now 21, and the British government will not allow her to return to Britain to face charges against her. Is that zeal? It would be quite easy to say that Jesus' zeal is okay because it's focused on the right thing. It's focused on the things of God and of correcting things that have gone wrong in religion. But I'm not sure John is saying that. I think John as a writer is aware enough of a level of irony and ambiguity. I think he sees that zeal has consequences. That zeal leads to reaction. And that zeal creates conflict. I'm not saying that conflict justifies zeal or that the fact of conflict justifies a person's position, but that there is conflict, there is disagreement when people say or do things, other people will react against it. Lent and Holy Week are an annual reminder in the Christian tradition, that this this conflict does not resolve easily. It does not even resolve in a way in which everybody can agree. Lent is an annual invitation into that struggle. 